Good morning, folks. We're entering a calm period on the sun, only low-level x-ray flashing to be seen. Now, we don't expect this to last for very long, but for the time being, activity has calmed considerably. Back on Earth, it's another story as three days of solar wind telemetry reveal two CMB impacts. The first one we saw already, and the second one hit yesterday. The latest interplanetary shockwave obliterated the electron bombardment and caused a strong energetic surge through the magnetosphere, but which did not come back down very much, leaving our shield relatively stable for the moment. So if we don't have magnetic instability, why would the DRAP look like this at the poles? It's because the high energy protons are surging once again with that impact, not even up to storm levels, however. The solar flaring has continued its decline since the X-Class solar flare. Part of it has to do with the departure of our big sunspot groups. We now turn attention center disk to find magnetic simplicity with polarity spread laterally. Coming in up north, we see the same thing at the southern portion. Still need another day or two for analysis on the incomers down south. Coronal holes dark. Positive north, south negative. Let's take a peek at the coronal fields. Some higher level activity within the field structure has bent open the current positive northern opening. You'll remember they did block the near-earth influence before. Not anymore. We're back to positive. And please note that in about a week we're going to have a trans-equatorial negative coronal hole that owns a full heliospheric longitude line. This is right when Jupiter and Mars geocentrically oppose the Earth. Our top seismic note of the day, it's a swarm beginning in northern Africa. We've taken two this morning in that very unusual location. Eyes open there. You're watching a small segment of a fascinating video from NASA. They put a camera on Orion's Tokus and watched the plasma trails as it descended through our electric layers. I recommend the full video if you get a minute today. We also have a terrific article out on New Star and how it can help us get a better look at our sun. A much better purpose for this device in my opinion. And we've also linked for you a video on sea turtles washing up in New England. No explanation as of yet. So we've got cyclone formation potential. Uyen storm connections are weakened during Earth's pre-perihelion month, which we're in now, but the double CME impact is still managing to drum up some storms in the south. Here's another major swing in the U.S. temperatures. As channel veterans know, there's a low sitting right in the middle. The wind drive causes all those temperature differentials, and on the eastern lead, it will pull enough heat and moisture for severe storms and flash flood warnings in the southeast. It's much colder to the north and especially on the western side of the low. This winter pounding continues and isn't exactly going to stop soon. The frost and freeze warnings creeping eastward across the states as the low does. This is the scene in Europe, not in one country or one region, but from the UK through Central Europe and up through the north, we're seeing tremendously disruptive weather and you know where it comes from. That same pattern driving tons of moisture from the Atlantic directly eastward. As it hovers and mixes with another flow from the south, there's just nothing to do but drop down on the people. Precipitable water overlay on down under to once again emphasize how those converging air masses represent the highest moisture and storm potential areas. Clouds popping all along that clash line. Got current conditions and shots of our star to close at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.20 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.